Hey, it's Joni. Welcome. I am here today to talk about some Stephen King novellas. Um, so he has a new book coming out in May, right? Another novella collection, and I am just stoked for it. Like, I love novella-length books, especially like horror books. Um, they all sound like they're going to be along the horror line. Um, I just, I don't know, they're, they're some of my favorites that just like, I don't know, 75 to 300 page length book. I don't know what exactly a novella is. I've seen different definitions, but like my memory from school is like 100 to 250 pages or something like that. That's probably not accurate, but that seems to be about what uh, King calls a novella collection is the like 200 and some page mark. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to tell you today, uh, I'm just going to rank his novellas that he's published so far in order, like, from least favorite to most favorite. I've liked all of them. I don't really, I haven't disliked pretty much anything I've read of his, but I just thought it would be fun to kind of tell you in order what I liked. So what I'm considering his novellas, really quick, are all four uh, stories from different seasons, all four from Four Past Midnight, the three longer ones from Full Dark, No Stars, and one of the stories from Skeleton Crew. So that's 12 stories total, and I'm just going to get into it. Number 12 from Four Past Midnight, The Sun Dog, uh, about a like mysterious camera that all the pictures that you take, no matter what you take it of, just shows this like mean, vicious, evil dog getting closer and closer to the camera, and you wonder what's going to happen when it gets to the camera. Um, it was a fun premise, and it, I didn't like not enjoy reading it, but it just reminded me of a, a Goosebumps episode so freaking much, like I couldn't get that out of my head that it kind of like marred my experience of it. Number 11, also from Four Past Midnight, is The Library Policeman. Um, this one was fun. It was about a crazy, like, evil, ghosty librarian lady, sort of. Uh, like I said, it was really fun. It just felt like it took a lot to get to the fun parts for me. It was cool, but not my favorite. Number 10, from Different Seasons, The Breathing Method. I actually like this one a lot more than it seems like a lot of people like. Uh, the main character is a doctor who is recounting the story of a patient of his from a long time ago. Uh, she was a single pregnant lady in a time when being a single pregnant lady was not acceptable, like grounds for getting fired from your job. The breathing method refers to a method he was teaching her to help her through labor. Uh, this one gets super horrific, and I actually really enjoyed a lot of it, but it just felt like, again, it took a long time to get there. It starts off with the main character in this, like, gentleman's club recounting stories. And it was kind of boring at the beginning for me. So, not bad. I liked it a lot more than a lot of people do. You don't actually hear a lot about it. Um, I enjoyed it. Number nine, don't shake me for putting this so low on the list. Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption from different seasons. The movie adaptation is my favorite movie of all time. I absolutely love it, and it is a great story. It has some great characters about a man who is wrongfully convicted of killing his wife and her lover, sent to Shawshank State Prison in the 1950s, a prison full of corruption that he becomes involved in. Um, it is a fantastic story. I just, my, my reading experience was probably potentially marred from having seen the movie already. Just, I feel like the movie took this great story and like developed the characters a lot more and uh, just added more to the plot line to the story in general. So reading about it was a little bit flat for me. Um, it was good though, don't don't hate me. Number eight from Four Past Midnight, The Langoliers. Uh, so I have had a love affair with the TV miniseries of this since childhood and the adaptation is super faithful to the story, to the source material. There are a couple small changes, but a lot of it is verbatim. And like reading the story was just like I've had more fun reading screenplays. It was just so, so similar. I know it so well that it's hard to, it was hard to like experience reading it because I like I knew all of the lines, all of the dialogue, exactly what was going to happen next. Um, it is a super, super fun story though. Uh, a group of people on a red-eye flight fall asleep while flying. They, they wake up to find that most people on the plane have disappeared and so have all the people on the ground. It has a like magic little girl, an evil, crazy, unstable businessman. Um, it just it, like all of the characters have super interesting stories uh, and it involves time travel and these like awesome monsters that the story is titled after. It's just an awesome fun story. Just my reading experience does not like I, I don't know how to be objective about my reading experience of it. Number seven from different seasons, The Body. Um, the basis for the movie Stand By Me. It's a great story about four adolescent boys who hear about a body who trek out to try to find it. Um, it has 
it has dealing with bullies and growing up and camaraderie and just some great things. It was really fun. It's a great like coming of age story with some of the grittier things that a lot of Stephen King work brings to a story in general. Number six from Four Past Midnight, Secret Window, Secret Garden, about a kind of unstable divorced writer. A man comes up to him, some mysterious dude claiming that he stole one of his stories and published it as his own. Um, it's hard to say much without giving it away if you don't know what the story is, but I thought it was fun. It was a kind of like spiraling, unreliable narrator situation. Usually when you see that, it tends to be women. This one was kind of fun. Um, I really enjoyed it. Number five from Full Dark No Stars, A Good Marriage. About a middle-aged woman who discovers that her husband is actually this crazy vicious serial killer that she's heard about on the news forever and ever. Um, and just what do you do in that search in that situation? Thinking about it, I honestly want to read it again. I've read Full Dark No Stars two times through and I would love to reread it again soon. A Good Marriage just has an awesome premise. Finding out that this person that you've been living with, sharing your life with, raising kids with for decades is not the person you thought he was. Or is he the same person but also has this other component? What do you do? You're going to ruin your children's lives and careers if you say anything. How do you interact with that man going forward? It's It was just fun and it gets gruesome and lovely. Number four, also from Full Dark No Stars, Big Driver, about a writer on her way home from giving a talk at a library. She gets viciously, brutally attacked and left for dead. And she decides to take vengeance on the man who did this to her uh, to try to find him and go after him. Um, it has some twists and turns. It was just a lot of fun. One of my favorites. Number three from Skeleton Crew, The Mist. Uh, this one is super bleak and depressing, which I don't love, but it is just so much fun. It's about a man and his son who get trapped in a grocery store when this crazy mist envelops the town after a storm the night before. And it's they discover that there are things in the mist, like crazy, gross, monster things in the mist. Um, it has just a great cast of characters, like some of them crazy, some of them with like awful motives, some of them just like terrified and not knowing what to do, trying to find comfort where they can. Um, it, some really good flawed characters and some crazy monsters. It was just a good time. I really enjoyed the mist. Number two from different seasons, Apt Pupil. Uh, this is about an adolescent boy who finds out that a man living in his area, this old man, is actually was actually a Nazi officer. And he uses that information to blackmail him into telling him all about these awful things. Stephen King does an evil adolescent boy super well, and he did a great job in this. It ratchets up into some really tense situations of the boy developing what kind of person he's going to be. Uh, just, it had some had some great fun moments. I love older characters in books, and this is, was just a super interesting one with this Nazi officer who you hate but also like kind of feel for because of what the kid is doing to him and it I don't know the dynamic was really fun and I didn't know how to feel throughout it it was a great time my number one favorite Stephen King novella of all time is 1922 from Full Dark No Stars uh the collection itself Full Dark No Stars that was the story that I had the least interest in going into it and it came out being my favorite of it uh, maybe I'm a little bit biased because it takes place in Nebraska, which is where I am from and have lived my whole life, but it's about a man, a farmer in 1922 in Nebraska who has a wife and a teenage son, and his wife wants to sell their land and move to the city, and she inherits some land from her father that uh, regardless of what her husband wants to do and if he's going to, you know, agree to move and sell his land too, she's going to sell that land to somebody who's going to be raising hogs and make just the odor and the atmosphere and the runoff from that, it will make his farmland unlivable, he thinks, just from the smell alone. Um, he decides to convince his son that the only way they can keep on with the lot, their life, as they always have, is to murder his wife. Um, the time period is super fun. It has characters like spiraling into, you know, awful places. Um, again, it's kind of bleak like a lot of these, but it was so much fun. It has so much packed into those couple hundred pages. I absolutely loved it. Anyway, those are my thoughts on his 12 currently published novellas. I'm super excited for If It Bleeds, though. Maybe uh, I'll have a new favorite novella here in the next few months. Uh, what's your favorite Stephen King novella? Let me know down below. I would love to talk to you about it, and I will talk to you all again soon. Bye.